We have asked ourselves a question which macroeconomists have been asking themselves for years and even centuries. What really leads to significant GDP growth? Is it natural resources? Is it technology? Is it the openness of governmental institutions? Or is it all of these factors combined? In order to try and find an answer, we have analyzed three cities, three industries, and all in all, three success stories. Dubai, San Francisco, and Hong Kong are the epitome of what every city should aspire to. But how did they become the global metropolis they are today? Were they always like this, or did they recently become these world centers? And if so, how did this transformation come about? Forty years ago, this breathtaking skyline didn't even exist. As a matter of fact, it was all a desert. Now, it is the fastest growing desert city on the planet. It seems almost impossible that a city like this could be built in such an inhospitable place, right in the middle of the Arabian desert. So, how did this miracle of Dubai come about? The reason why Dubai's economy grew is oil money. It is thanks to the revenues obtained from oil that Dubai was able to build roads, port, business centers, educational institutes and medical facilities. Unlike other Middle Eastern countries with larger oil and natural gas reserves, Dubai has been gradually reducing its dependence from oil revenues as time has gone by. This is shown by the fact that in 19,000 oil comprised 25% of Dubai's GDP, while today it only represents 1.5% of its economy. Dubai has become the main choice for regional and international investors because it has focused on other sectors such as construction. Dubai has a booming yet highly regulated real estate market with a current leverage level of 5% compared to the 50% loan growth which took place in the bust of the global real estate market. Another key industry is the transportation industry, Dubai's airport, which occupies a privileged geographic position at the crossroads of Europe, Africa and Asia, links 85 global airlines and more than 130 destinations, and its port connects more than 120 shipping lines. In addition, Emirates Airlines still remains profitable and keeps on expanding. Relating to macroeconomic theory and looking at the proximate causes for economic growth, we find that the abundance of factors of production, in this case oil, has helped the economy grow. Nevertheless, the abundance of physical capital is no good in real terms, due to the diminishing returns of scale. However, this could change if it is backed up by technological development that increases the productivity per unit of capital, something Dubai has exercised over the past few years. The fundamental cause has been the inclusive economic policies and market liberalization versus those of other oil abundant countries in the region. Moreover, Dubai enjoys a strong educational system and a culture of hard work and entrepreneurship, which further increase the productivity per worker. Also, we must mention Dubai's peaceful history, which allows it to have greater economic growth by avoiding extractive policies. When we think of technology, we inevitably associate it with Silicon Valley. At the same time, Silicon Valley and San Francisco, the most developed city in this area, go hand in hand. This city is where the California Gold Rush of 1849 took place. More than one century later, history repeated itself, but this time in the form of a technology gold rush. The creation of a science, technology, engineering and mathematics research base, the abundance of venture capital funds and the leadership of Stanford University are all factors which contributed to the development of the largest technological hub in the world and put San Francisco on the map for investors all around the globe. With the invention of the first microprocessor, the creation of the Homebrew Computer Club, establishment of numerous venture capital firms and the opening of internet to commercial use, history was made at Silicon Valley and San Francisco. San Francisco was able to become a leading hub and startup ecosystem for high-tech innovation and scientific development, as well as a home to many of the largest high-tech corporations in the world. Before the dot-com bubble, which took place in the year 2000, 
when the NASDAQ stock market crashed spectacularly, highly skilled workers immigrated to San Francisco and after the recovery from such a horrific economic event, the inflow of workers kept rising. This wide variety of human capital, which mostly originated from Asia and Latin America, includes experts in business, finance, technology, manufacturing and logistics. In this case, the proximate causes for economic growth are primarily the technology available, which is being exported globally, and the amount of capable human capital. It is important to consider that the human capital is highly prepared, thus becoming more productive than the average. We see, therefore, that the diminishing return of human capital accumulation is compensated by the technological advance. Considering fundamental causes, again, American institutions help in economic growth, being a liberalized economy that foments free trades and makes American companies highly competitive. American culture has developed around living the American dream, which impulses its population to pursue its dreams of becoming the greatest, thus creating a large number of entrepreneurial activity. Hong Kong presents a case considerably different to those of Dubai and San Francisco. Whilst these two cities owed their own success to the capital, technology and institutions, Hong Kong's success story is written with an entrepreneurial pen on a liberal book. Metaphors aside, the former British colony has experienced a catch-up growth that has made it rank upon the most competitive states in the world. With high GDP per capita, over 38,000 US dollars, its universities ranking upon the global highest and long-term projected growth rates around 2 and 3%, guaranteeing a stability. Also, Hong Kong has the world's fourth largest port, aiding it to rank ninth in the world trade rankings. Moreover, Hong Kong exports large amounts of textiles, garments and clothing, backed up by governmental stimulus on technological advance to support the increase of capital and reduce diminishing returns of scale. All this is said to be thanks to a strong inclusive economic policy characterized by a stable government with a strong rule of law and low tax policy. This makes Hong Kong a very attractive settlement for foreign direct investment, which increases its GDP from an expenditure point of view. In addition, other fundamental causes of growth include Hong Kong's geographical position, which allows it to trade easily with the Western world and Asia and its culture of hard work and self-earning, which stimulate productivity at work and growth. The proximate causes for Hong Kong's economic success are the amount of prepared human capital, which is very productive, and the constant trading of physical capital, which is not being accumulated, but regularly traded. But what was the key for these three cities in general? Without a doubt, it was being willing and able to exploit an outstanding opportunity the discovery of oil reserves in Dubai, the development of a high technology industry in San Francisco, and the comparative openness with respect to mainland China due to its quasi-independent status after the British recolonized it in Hong Kong. Not only this, but having a long-term vision to reduce dependence on the particular sector which contributed the most towards a rapid exponential growth. For example, transitioning from the oil industry to others such as the construction, transportation and manufacturing in Dubai, from the technology industry to the venture capital and construction industries in San Francisco, and from commerce industry to the financial service industry in Hong Kong. And finally, above all else, entrepreneurial, investor-oriented and business-friendly mindset of each of these three local governments discussed in the video. The adoption of Western liberal values when it comes to economics and trade, which are expected from a city like San Francisco, but not from cities like Dubai or Hong Kong, taking into account the national identity, is reflected by the institutions which can be found here, and account for the fundamental causes of prosperity. Yeah.